Welcome to this episode of The Integrated Entrepreneur. I'm here with my co-host, Keith. Keith, what's going on? What's going on, dog? Hey, we're going to talk about seasons, right? And um, I think it's super important because based on where the majority of operators and entrepreneurs are and the markets as a whole, it matters because it can change your strategy it can change where your focus is and what you're focusing on right yeah. and let's just call it out when we're talking about seasons here guys summer is obviously the best season right it's when you're out it's when you're making the most money it's when all your clients or who would be your clients have money they're flush with cash spring is right before summer right things are getting really good all right it's starting to get nicer out it's starting to the economy is starting to loosen up a little bit Fall is when you just had a great season and now you're starting to see the leaves change. You're starting to see the market change and shit's you're starting to see all of them. What was that? So shit's getting noticed. Yeah. 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 And basically you're starting right to see cracks in the economy or major flaws in the economy. And then winter is just shit. No one goes outside, right? No one has money. Winter is that time that you are just trying to, uh, survive and surviving is a win. All right. And so me and Keith, before we got on here, we're just talking about, you know, how we're doing, how people we know are doing. And we wanted to kind of go into this. So Keith, tell us, where do you, th where do you think we are and why? I still think we're cruising at like 14,000 feet. I, yeah. don't think, I don't think we've made impact yet to where the no. bottom of this is going to be. Um, but I want to start with this, right? And this is, man, if I think back 20 plus years and, and all the different little cyclical environments that we've been in and out of as a business owner in the financial planning space, et cetera, like we forget the fucking bad times way too quick yep. and go back to ripping money and just spend it on control. You know what I mean? And just doing and building and all everything's well until that next bad time. And then it's like the first time the shit's ever happened to us. And and what mm -hmm. I've done really well, I think, and, and kind of like just making sure of is making sure that I remember those times that suck. Yeah. Because when the times that are good, you have to be calculated to, to pack money away, to squirrel shit away for when the yeah. times are bad so that when they're bad, they're not so bad. Yep. Right. And so I think that's one of the big, huge differentiators on, you talk to some business owners today and they're like, holy fuck, dude, this shit sucks, but I'm yeah. going to be okay versus holy shit, dude, I'm going to be bankrupt in six months because we just, we ran out of everything. Yeah. Um, so where we are today, where I hope everyone is today is like, let, you know, remembering the 08, 09, the 19 and 20, the, you know, yep. to hopefully you're in that it's okay, but I'll survive mode. Uh, where we are today is not nearly the bottom in my opinion. Where we are today is the worst I've seen interest rate wise, inflation wise. I think you could agree with that. Yeah. Um, but I think I think we we as a country have room to fail more. And I think it's going to it's going to go down way, well before it comes back up. Yeah. A couple, a couple, a couple things I want to touch on. First off, pay a quick compliment. Um, a lot of people talk about doing things or they should do this and then they do something completely different. Something you guys don't know about Keith uh, prior to this and coming on here and for months, Keith got rid of a lot of unnecessary things to add the money back into his business. Okay. So <laughs> we're sitting up here, we're telling you what we're doing. Yeah. Keith actually did it. Okay. And that was prior to us talking about it. Yeah. All right. Second, you know, it's weird. I remember 08, 09 and 19 and 2000. I don't, necessarily always remember how difficult it was in there because what was going on because yes it's difficult to operate in that but every every downturn is caused by something different and there's are different factors going on so that yep. each time is a little different but yes i do remember it was a little bit more challenging but what i really my takeaways were were the opportunities after so i remember after 0809 going into real estate hard and making a killing OK, yep. with investment properties. I remember in 1920, ev um, everybody was coming to us for the PPP and the EIDL loan. So I did all right in that time frame. 
this time frame, I don't know what's next. So I am just prepping myself as best we can. And, you know, to go into what, what time or where are we, I think we're in the fall, guys. And I think that if you have prepared, it's you can still prepare more. OK, because I do I don't think we have what we need to get out of this in a timely manner. Uh, and I'll touch on that in a little bit. Uh, if you haven't started, now is the perfect time. OK, and here's a great way to look at how to prep things. So if you guys just I'm going to give you guys a little bit of advice on how to prep, how to get through this stuff and to give yourselves the best shot of doing that. So first off, credit, your credit has to be very high. OK, your personal credit, your business credit. By the way, if you need help with your business credit, shameless plug, we have a workshop that costs half of what it normally costs to build your business credit, and that is one of four deliverables. Check out the foundation workshop, come there. That's actually a perfect way to prep for this. We'll build your business credit and we'll make sure you can unlock all the access to money that you need. Uh, second, okay guys, and this is really important, these workshops are gonna be going on. So I will have one every month, you can always hop in but we are picking who comes. So, and now to the, the next point, credit's good. Now you need access to cash. You don't actually have to have the cash, but you need access to cash. So what does that look like? Looks like having access to a line of credit, uh, a whole life policy. You actually cannot have enough places to pull cash from. So if you have them already set, great. If not, I'd be setting them up as quickly as humanly possible. Line of credit, whole life. Quick, let's name and, the quickest, easiest ones to get. Line of credit from, from a bank on your home. If you have home equity line of credit, if you got mm -hmm. equity in it, that's the first place to start. It's the quickest. Yep. Uh, second would be any kind of mom and pop location, uh, banking type institutions that you guys have relationships with. Or just come here. Perfect. Or call John. <laughs> yeah, it's quick. It'll be done in a day. Um, <laughs> All right, so having access to cash. Now sure. next, and this is what Keith did, knock out and kill everything that is not necessary, okay? So if you're driving around with a really, really nice sports car you don't really use a lot, if you have a boat you really don't use a lot, any of these expenses that has have debt attached, or even if they don't have debt attached, that cash is very, very valuable to you. Get that cash, put it in the bank. Now, when things go sideways, you have a war chest to either pull yourself out of it or take advantage of the opportunities that are going to come up. All right. Because they're going to come up, guys. This is this oh, yeah. is universal. All right. So once you have cash, have access to cash, have your credit solid and you've sold off all, any of the notes. Now it's just continuing to build that cash and staying ready. We'll call it fire. Would, would you add anything to that, Keith? No, I, you know, the more money, the better, the more firepower, the better, right? And that's what we call it, ammunition for your gun. So when you're ready yep. to pull the trigger and you got the target, you can shoot. And that, you know, what, the other question that typically comes up is like, what is enough cash, right? What is enough liquidity? I don't that's think there's ever point. enough, but if, if we're talking about a number, you know, we can coach around six months of your fixed expenses in cash, readily accessible. Right, that you can, if you have not one more client walk in the door for six months, you got an idea of a time frame that you can survive and figure it the fuck out. Yep. You know, on the other side of that, let's talk about what are the opportunities that are going to come up because I think people miss the opportunity in plain sight and they think, oh, it's a good time for me to buy something. It's a good time for you to buy someone else's business that's going mm -hmm. out. It's a good time for you to pick up. Uh, top tier employees that get laid off at your competitors' locations. Yes, it is. Those are the things that as a business owner, you should probably think about. Okay, if I'm stacking cash, yeah, it's to get me through payroll if I need it. The reality is you probably won't lose enough clients to have to do that. So then it's a matter of executing the best transaction after the fact when that other shoe hits. <laughs> When the guy you've been chasing to come onto your team is now all of a sudden available, you got to be in the number one position because the number two position is not going to get the pick. No. Right? So those are things that you need to think about organically and ideally in preparation for the next downturn, not this one that we're in. <laughs> yeah, right? right? A little late to the show here. It's not too late, but there's guys like me who have been eyeballing certain individuals who I know will probably be available in the next year. Mm -hmm. And I want to go to them with a competitive package, right? What? So those are things that I look at. What do you look at when that shoe hits and you're ready to deploy cash? 
Well, one, I, I actually see that going on. So you can actually pick up people that are A players right now. There's never been a better time, and that's only going to increase moving forward. So, guys, massive opportunity right there. Uh, but for me, going forward, here's what I would look at. If you are an operator that has a sensitivity to supplies or materials, okay, so build anything, construction, building, uh, home services, or anything, any manufacturing that needs raw materials, I would be buying those raw materials now okay i would be stockpiling these things and i would still make sure you have six months of cash all right i know that's hard to do but that's one of the things i would be doing is looking for discounts on on inventory and things that will help and things i know i'll go through in my business the other thing is look for businesses that potentially could be bought in your industry for cheap that would still serve your clients the same way so that's another opportunity. And then the last opportunity I, I see, and I don't know when to tell you to do this, but I would tell you to start monitoring it, is I would look at any type of real estate that you want to get your hands on in the area that you haven't been able to get because it's too expensive or you didn't have the down payment or the rates weren't where you needed them. And what I would do is I would watch the property values and I would put out search queries for specific types of property in areas that you know will be clutch and be a great buy long term. And I would be watching the prices on that. And I would not move until you know you have a deal that is really going to be a winner. And I would then, once you do it once, repeat the fucking process and just keep doing it and doing it and doing it over. That's what one of the things I would be doing here. Any, any uh, feedback on that? No, I think we're pretty much in the same same space there. It's just a really good time. Really, it's it's, it's opportunistic. You know, a lot of times as as uh, you know, human nature is the negative side of it. Oh, me, what was me? And you know, my we took a hit, big big hit. But to your point, like I got rid of the sports car, I got rid of the boat, I got rid of shit that I didn't necessarily need. Did I? Did it suck? Yeah. But here's the sad <laughs> reality: is that those are things that I can go rebuy at some point in time. When I'm, when probably cheaper than what you just got rid of them. Yeah. Probably a little cheaper, right? right. When I go buy again. So, you know, it, it's a matter of like, you got to bat in the hatches as the leader of the ship. You got to do things that suck. And yeah. I think, you know, from that, a lot of our employees uh, took note of me doing that and appreciated it because they yeah. see, you know, how, you got to look at it this way too. Half the half the time they saw me driving around a badass car. You know, yeah. Oh, so bitch got a nice car. Fuck, right? Now it's like, hey, I sold this because I want to make sure that I can still pay you guys through whatever's ahead of us financially. Yeah. Right. Send and so message. they see that too, right? And so yeah. then the culture was got got tighter, and people started showing up more, and you know, organically things got better. Um, so it, there's there's wins and losses to all of it, guys. And the reality is. I don't care if you have to pay 15% on a dollar to save your business. If that's what it takes for you to save your business and get through yeah. this time, then we need to help you guys situate that and make sure that you have accessibility. Yep. And that's really what the, the message is, is take a real good look, peel the onion layers back and make sure that you've got defense in place so that when the shit does get worse, you're good. We're okay. you're, yeah. up. you're good. And that's all yeah. the fucking matters to me. <laughs> And to Keith's point, guys, he said something earlier about this is the worst he's ever seen interest rates in his life. And he's right. In our lifetime, interest rates have never been this high, but they're back. Believe it or not, they're just higher than average historically right now. And a lot of people don't right. understand that or don't see how I could say that. But that is the um, that is accurate. They are it's just it's a little bit except for taxes. Right. Yeah. Google, guys, if you don't know what we're talking about. Get off of this and Google interest rate environment historically, tax brackets historically. Yeah. Look back at the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You'll have a fucking heart attack. Yeah, and, and this brings us to the next point on this topic that is very important to understand. And, and that is that we are in fall. I'm not telling you the sky is falling out. I'm, not, I'm telling you to be ready and be prepared. Now, when this does happen, 
I do think it's going to be longer than the others that we've mentioned. So 08 and 2000. And here's why. In 2008, interest rates were, I believe, around six or seven percent, maybe eight percent. OK. And so when everything hit the wall, we were able to pump massive liquidity into the market and we were able to drop interest rates. Those two things, we printed a lot of money. We, we made it the market have a lot of liquidity in it that was able to get us out of the shit last time. OK, and they did the same exact play in 19 and 20. And the challenge that we're going to have is because they ran that play twice, printed all that money and lowered rates, we're getting the built up inflation that has slowly but quickly been releasing and raising rates. And so now they are going to be in a position where if they lower rates, we could have runaway inflation and the dollar could go to zero. And if they keep tightening, we're going to be in a depression because there's not going to be any liquidity. Okay. Right. So they don't really have the necessary fixes or the levers to pull to fix everything once we do have this downturn. And that's why I think it will take longer to build out. And that's why I think it's more important than ever to prepare for it today. And listen, if I'm wrong and Keith is wrong, the worst thing you do, did is sold a bunch of toys, got really cash heavy, got your credit up, and and you have an awesome business that is ready to take care, take advantage of opportunities. That is the worst thing that happens if you listen to us and we're wrong. Now. It's not shitty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not terrible. Now, let's play this out the other way. You, you think me and Keith are wrong. You'd do nothing. And we, even if we were partially right, and you're not prepared, it's going to be bad. Okay. So you have to kind of understand that we're doing this and we're saying this not out of worry or concern. We're, we're doing this because we care and we want to see you guys win. And if we're wrong, we just gave you great advice. That's going to help you either way. If we're we right. How to be a good saver. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> how, <laughs> how to not spend every dollar you make. So. So I would say, please implement this stuff. Please consider coming to the workshop. And even if you don't work with me on financing or you don't work with Keith on wealth management, work with somebody and get the help that you need so you can run a better business, so you can operate a life that you're more proud of. All right. That's what we care about. We want to. And if you that. don't like us and you just don't know anyone in that space, reach out to us anyway and we'll give you a good referral. Yes. Yeah, I got no, I, I'll, I know who of my competitors I can send you to that will actually do a decent job. And I don't mind doing it. Yeah. You know? And so just focus on this, guys. I know we gave you guys a lot of information here, but focus on that. Take care of those five things to prepare for a downturn. And then just keep working at those. And I promise you, things are going to you will be in a really good position to take advantage of opportunities whether they come from a, a down economic downturn or not get it done guys share this with someone that needs to hear it we appreciate you guys and we will catch you on the next one peace